Dr. Pamela Rui, Professor and Extension Milk Quality Veterinarian at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And today we're going to be discussing the occurrence of clinical mastitis in dairy cows. Now, as we've discussed in previous episodes, mastitis is caused by a bacterial infection of the udder. And 99% of the time, this disease develops when exposure of bacteria at the teat end exceed the ability of the cow's immune defenses to withstand that exposure. After the bacterial infection occurs, the bacteria behave just like any other bacterial infection of any organ system. The bacteria multiply, and then um, they can present in several different states. One of the state that the bacteria can present in is subclinical mastitis, which we've discussed in a previous episode. And um, in that, in subclinical mastitis, the milk appears normal, but it contains excessive numbers of inflammatory cells. The other state that these bacterial infections can occur in are what we call clinical mastitis. And when a cow's um, infection of her udder has progressed to clinical mastitis, we recognize this, this by um, observation of the milk. And what we'll see is that because of the immune response and because of um, the infection, uh, what we'll recognize is that the milk appears abnormal. Now this is an important um, disease of dairy cattle. It's very important to detect it because milk that is produced from an infected gland with abnormal appearing milk cannot be sold for human consumption. So one of the roles of dairy farming and milking the cows is to detect and um, identify these cases so that the milk isn't added to the human uh, food supply. Mastitis, unfortunately, is a common disease of dairy cattle. Clinical mastitis typically will occur in about 16 to 40 percent of all cows in any one lactation. Now, we know that uh, mastitis is a bacterial infection of the udder, but um, we have to also think about what type of bacteria actually cause clinical mastitis. Interestingly enough, when we take milk samples from cows that have abnormal appearing milk, this disease we call clinical mastitis, approximately 25 to 30 percent of the time we won't be able to recover bacteria. Now the failure to recover bacteria from these infected cows does not mean that bacteria aren't causing the infection. What it typically is a sign of is a successful immune response by that cow. The bacteria infected the udder, the cow's immune system responded, the milk is abnormal as a result of that inflammatory process, and now the number of bacteria in that milk have fallen below the detection limit. And about 25 to 30 percent of the time, um, upon observation of abnormal milk, we simply won't find any bacteria there because of that process. About 30 to 35 percent of the time um, on modern dairy farms today, uh, gram-negative bacteria, these bacteria such as E. coli or Klebsiella species, gram-negative bacteria, which typically originate from the environment of the cows, will be the causative pathogen. And another 25 to maybe 40 percent of the time, depending on the herd and the circumstances of exposure on the individual herd, about 25 to 40 percent of the time, gram-positive um, bacteria such as streptococci, coagulase negative staphylococci, or um, increasingly rarely today, uh, Staphylococcus aureus may be the causative pathogens. So there's a variety of bacteria which can cause clinical mastitis in dairy cattle. And um, one interesting thing about this is that while there's many different bacteria that can cause clinical mastitis, they may present with exactly the same clinical signs. And most of the time, when uh, cows experience clinical mastitis, the symptoms that we see in the cow are very mild. In fact, in order to monitor and assess the severity of mastitis, clinical mastitis occurring in dairy cows, we recommend that uh, farmers record what we call a severity score. These severity scores are very simple. When a case of clinical mastitis is detected, uh, a grade is assigned to it based on the level of the symptoms. Grade 1, or severity score 1, would mean that only the milk is abnormal. There'd be no other symptoms associated with the cow. So that would be a mild case. Grade 2 uh, would have two levels of symptoms, meaning that both the milk is abnormal and the gland, the quarter of the cow, is swollen or red. 
and then severity score three, these are the most serious uh, uh, cases, would mean that there's three levels of the animal affected. The milk is abnormal, the quarter may be swollen, and then we have a systemic sign, such as um, a fever, or anorexia, a feed, or perhaps we have a large drop in production. When we have gone to herds and collected data on the severity of mastitis, just as a benchmark, approximately 15% of the cases will be severity score three. So 85% of the cases will typically be um, involving only the milk or the milk and the gland itself. Uh, we've also gone to farms. In fact, we have data from uh, about 700 cases of clinical mastitis on 51 dairy farms where we have both severity scores and the pathogens that cause the mastitis, the type of bacteria. And what we've t tried to look at is can we associate the symptoms with the type of bacteria? And unfortunately, the only way to determine what type of bacteria are causing the case is to actually take an aseptically collected milk sample and submit it for culture. Because any type of bacteria can cause any grade of mastitis. Now there's one uh, kind of little clue though that we can get about the type of mastitis. When we have mastitis caused by gram-negative bacteria such as E. coli or Klebsiella, approximately 30 percent of those cases will present as severity score three. So a larger proportion of these gram-negative cases will be severity score three as compared to maybe 5% um, or 10% of gram-positive bacteria. But um, in general, we must have a culture to determine the type of pathogen. One of the difficulties with having such a mild disease occurring on a regular basis on dairy farms is that we have to ensure that we have effective programs for monitoring and managing this disease. And in order to do that, one of the most important things that we can do is have a system for early detection of the cases. When we look at monitoring and measuring um, clinical mastitis and making sure that we have the right data, one of the things we have to think about on each farm is what is the definition of clinical mastitis? And is that definition of uh, what clinical mastitis is the same for the milking technicians, the farm managers, and the veterinarians? Uh, one simple way to ensure that a standard definition is used is simply to make sure that for milk is removed at each milking and observed by the milking technician. So observation of that for milk is probably the most important step we can do to ensure that we catch the mild cases. Now this may seem intuitive that this is something that should be done, but in a recent study, uh, including almost 300 small to moderate sized dairy farms across three states, only 60% of the people participating in that study indicated that they followed the simple practice. So one of the things we'd like to do is increase um, the early detection of mastitis. Remember, the observation of four milk before each milking is the only method that we have in order to detect mild cases of mastitis. And also remember, approximately 50% of the cases of mastitis will present in this um, fashion. And earlier detection will result in better animal welfare because we can make um, better treatment and control decisions. As part of our um, complete program to control clinical mastitis, we also have to ensure that health records are kept for each cow. There's a few simple things we should include in these permanent health records. We should include, of course, the cow identification, the date the d disease occurred, the severity, that's that severity score one, two, or three, the treatment that's administered to that cow, the days the milk must be discarded, and that milk discard period would include both the period where the milk is abnormal and this milk um, cannot be legally sold, and then the withholding period after any treatments have been administered in order to remove um, any residues of those treatments from the animal system. Review of these treatment records on a regular basis is an excellent way to involve your veterinarian in the preventive health care plan for your dairy animals. All right, so what should you take back to the barn about clinical mastitis? First of all, we have to understand that clinical mastitis is a frequent disease of dairy cattle. There must be a system in place to detect it, monitor it, and manage it. 
One of the most important things we can do on the farm to control clinical mastitis is a good job of detecting it. And we do that by observing for milk at each milking. Remember, if we don't do this, 50% of the cases of mastitis will not be detected in this early state. And early detection of the mastitis gives us more options and helps us ensure better cow welfare. Just to sum it all up, remember, clinical mastitis is caused by a variety of bacteria and the only way to determine the correct treatment is to identify the bacteria.